After 20 years, you would want a break too. But the guys are back now. Enjoy. It's the Opie and Anthony Show on Sirius XM. Yeah, Yo, yeah. I'm very mean, happy to say yeah. Louis C.K. is in studio. Uh, season 4 tonight on FX, starting at 10 o'clock. Two episodes yes. every Monday night for the next seven weeks, I believe, right? Seven weeks, 14 episodes. And we were just talked about all the episodes because we were lucky yeah. enough to see the first four. We were privy to the first four, which is great before it airs. But then after it airs, well, you're like, no, I can't watch for like four <laughs> and, fucking episodes. Well, it's only episodes. two weeks. That's true, true, yes. And after that, the first four are more like the other seasons. Uh-huh. That they're like single stories. Right. right. But the first, the fourth episode with the elevator right. lady. Yes. The elevator lady and then the young woman. Right. They yeah, stay, yeah. That's Ellen Burstyn. Uh-huh, yeah. And yeah. Esther Bellant, who's, I don't know if you ever saw Stranger Than Paradise. Remember that Jim Jarmusch movie? Oh, man. No, I didn't right. see that no, one. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where, uh, nobody yeah. remembers uh, that. Uh, we're not. Uh, I've never uh, seen yeah. any of his movies. <laughs> uh, you know who was fan <laughs> We're not that cool. I'm sorry. That, uh, <laughs> we're, uh, <laughs> goddamn, um, Charles Grodin. He's great, right? He's Holy in a, he's shit. in four episodes. Is so anyway, a new that, that the fourth episode is the beginning of a six episode story. Oh, okay. okay, great. Yes. And then after that there's a two episode story and then another two. So all the rest are connected. Mm-hmm. You no know what makes Charles Grodin so brilliant? He's just hanging out eating his sandwich. Yeah. And as a viewer, I'm like, eat the fucking sandwich and get get <laughs> acting. <laughs> but he took his time. Oh, like, he made I, a whole thing of it. He just was taking yeah. his time before yeah, he yeah. was going to acknowledge and talk to Louis about what was going on <laughs> right. in that scene. But the brilliance uh, of that, to just yeah. make eating well, a sandwich it was, so... It, it was written that way. I mean, he definitely right, wouldn't right. have taken <laughs> it upon himself <laughs> <Yeah>. to just <laughs> take <laughs> that long. You know yeah. yeah. Right. And I certainly would have cut it if he just did it. It would have been like, what's he doing? That's fine. I eat the sandwich. Oh, I He's you're... a really... Great guy. He's very funny and yeah. Oh, I, I loved imp- having him around. It was actually uh, hard to shoot with him because it was so fun to talk to him. Oh, really? Yeah. So I had to have the AD kind of, you know, you know, I told him just don't because they were all very reverential. And of the, course, like, just tell me when we have to work again because he's got a million <laughs> great stories. I right. bet. Yeah, he's oh, a great man. guy. That and another thing. There were so many fucking just hilarious moments in the four episodes that I watched. The poker scene with the, the Jimmy yeah, Washington yeah, gang. With all the guys again. Right. And that goddamn joke with the guy at the elevator, the construction oh, the yeah, yeah, worker, the oh, was that yeah. hilariously like, <laughs> no, that's not the joke. <laughs> I fucking loved it. I know that guy. I've yeah. worked with him. You are that guy. I am that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, and there's so many moments like that. Like the whole, the whole storyline, obviously, uh, of, of each episode is very well written and very fun and, right. and just so natural. But but then there's these moments of just hilarious little parts that are in there. I oh, thanks, I can't man. tell you how much I thought. As far as just seeing four episodes at the beginning of the season, I thought it, it like it looks like this is one of the best seasons. I think it's my favorite it's, one, maybe. Yeah. But I don't know. They're all of they course, different yeah. things I like about each hard season. For, hard for you to tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can't think back that well. But this one feels like... I mean, we spent much more time on it. We yeah. we, we took a lot... We shot like 60 days. Usually we shoot 40. Wow. Oh, so really? It was yeah, okay. literally like uh, the, whatever that percentage is more. <laughs> whatever it is. That yeah, much more. It's a third than, more. A third more. <laughs> nice work. Yeah. You, you were yeah. missed. Taking the year off, it seems like it was a good yeah. thing for you huh? oh definitely yeah because yeah. i just took longer to execute the season i took longer to write it and longer to shoot it and then editing it was nothing because because we were so well shot yeah so yeah. then it was just assembling it usually yeah. editing takes a long time when you didn't shoot well so all oh, right so yeah, yeah you're trying to fix it all you gotta <laughs> fix it in the mix yeah <laughs> you gotta explain the subway thing again the what? I, the subway. I was obsessed with the fact that the subway know, rules. No, you just mean? just you filming on a subway train. Oh, and, yeah. How do you get access to one? Oh well, we, you know how, we, how does that work again? Because I mean, as you see it, you're like, oh my god, I think you got the platform shut down for an afternoon. <laughs> of course, that didn't happen. No, it's hard to shoot in New York City subways. It's a lot yeah. of ring and roll and uh, language. Yes, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's it's uh you gotta you, you you know they obviously you need to get a permit and they need to the way the way it works is that there's one train that they let you use right it's the shuttle train 
that all that train does is go from Grand Central to uh, Times Square. Oh, okay. The S train. Oh, right. Oh. The S train has no other route. It just goes between two stops. Right. Oh, shit. So that's the train they give you, and they give you those two platforms that you can use, and you can't shoot until, like, you can't start shooting until about 10 o'clock at night. Mm. So they shut down the S train. Oh, they did? Yeah. That's a lot. That's a way busier one than See, I would have thought. That's a pretty busy uh, well, that's, line. Well, but at that time of night, nobody's yeah, much true. on it. Who's going See, over there? And I'm they sure. only shut down one they don't shut down the whole S train service. Mm -hmm. It just it basically gets cut like in half. They just they let us use one. Uh, yeah, and then the rest of it, like we actually asked to use. This was more ambitious than we've ever done on the subway. That we asked to we we used Hundred uh, Third Street at Lexington. Right. Um. But that was not using the train. But we, you know you have to go like we were like all we're gonna do is run around the platform, and uh, they said you can't touch a train. <laughs> on, on those other ones. You can't go near a train. I'm like, totally. And then you get permission based on that. And then once you have that permission, you go, we just want an actor to get off the train. We won't put a camera on the train. We just want an actor to get off, to get off the train. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then they ha they go, but not on the train. You can't show an actor getting off the train. You go, totally. totally. And then on the day and the moment, you go, look, the trains, I'm just getting on as a human. Like, I actually was saying to them, I'm, I'm going. A, I, have, I have a Metro card. I'm getting on the train. Right. You can't stop me from getting on the train. <laughs> <laughs> so... You try not to burn too many bridges with them each time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's a pain in the ass. That's why I wanted to ask you about because it seems exhausting, and you you write this really really good storyline, and now you have to hard, work around the uh, yes. the city's rules. It's very hard. New York City is a really hard place to shoot in some aspects. Yeah. It's also great mm -hmm. though because they're used to it everywhere, and mm -hmm. I love it. It's fun. You yeah. got to get in shape for it though. That was a hard up and thing. down those stairs. Yeah, and all of this stuff. <laughs> just running those kind of shoots is really exhausting, and Wait. that one. That you know, because we have to start shooting at eight p.m., so we're we wrapped around six in the morning. Wow. Are, you usually, yeah. are there regular people just getting on off the train that you're just kind of no? Filming yourself? All the, it's all they're all extras. So wow. we feel that's mm -hmm. also it's very expensive, and when you have that many extras and you're trying to create a random moment, right? In order to shoot it right. They has to be the same every time, so they oh actually have to tell God. every fucking person <laughs> where they randomly should move. Yes, where they and then everyone has to reset, and then you would have the moment a a happen again. I'm amazed. I I have my AD uh, assistant director, this guy Adam Eskett. I'm amazed how he's able to do it. You use uh, you you do the extras thing uh, well. Like there's so many movies where they have oh the the construction work of course they they dress him in <laughs> it mm -hmm. looks like but, oh that guy would be but here. we had to ask mm -hmm. you if that was extras because uh, they really just blend in well to the to the scenes yeah it's important to pe feel like it's a real place I think yeah. and then also to try to get actors to feel like extras a lot of the times especially people who are supposed to just be some guy right. and then they pop out and do something oh right. they, yeah because I've I've heard that extras sometimes want to make themselves stand out so they do something well no stupid. it's that <laughs> actors, I wish actors were more like extras. Some extras are geniuses at seeming totally real. Right. Like in the subway thing, I'm not going to give away the story, right, but at no. the end of this terrible thing that happens where I'm, I'm yelling at my kids and stuff, there's one guy... I kept the shot longer than I should have as far as the timing, right. but this one guy on the platform did an amazing job of like looking at me and kind of shaking his head, and it was a very for him a very private moment, <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. just going, man, that's fucked up. Like you can see, <laughs> right. and it was so real. Yeah. Like I was just an extra. He probably wow. got paid, you know, eighty bucks for twelve hours of work. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. But some actors, you know, when you're going to talk to somebody like a construction worker or whatever, that yeah. if the actor looks too right. acty. Right, exactly. You know, it's like if you're watching a movie and the main character goes to buy a newspaper and, oh, Al Pacino runs that newspaper kiosk. <laughs> right, right. I wonder if that's going to figure in. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if yes, uh, yes. I wonder if that's the part. Yeah. You, uh, I remember we did some scene in a bar and it was so funny. Some extra just kept trying to move himself to get in the scene. Yeah. And Louis got annoyed. He goes, that guy's really annoying me. He goes, no, just stand over there. And he put him like oh, eight shit. feet out of the camera. camera. <laughs> Oh, yeah. shit. That was it for him. But still make him go stand there and do something. Right, right. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember that guy. Yeah, he really bugged you. There was a guy who was just supposed to stand from the waist down. You're supposed to see him because he's behind somebody who's sitting. Uh -huh. and he's supposed to stand there holding a tray, uh, 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 like a waiter tray. 
But he held it like he the way he just stood holding the tray was so he, like he was going to throw it like a discus. It was so <laughs> awkward. <laughs> yeah. And we I like fired him. <laughs> Told him to go home. You got a great eye for that stuff. Uh, you can you can pick that shit out in other TV shows and movies. It drives me nuts. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's supposed to be just dumb background stuff yeah. or whatever. Uh, the Seinfeld episode too. People are going to be talking about that was. Uh, yeah, right, yeah, that yeah. went really great. It's hard to talk about these freaking these episodes because we no one has seen them been yet. On TV yet. Yeah, you well, don't, and you don't want to wreck it. I could t I could ask you this: where yeah. where did you get the Hamptons house? We just that wasn't uh, that wasn't in the Hamptons, was it? Yeah, sure it was. It was okay. All that was right on the Hamptons. Yeah. And you could just rent a Hamptons house like that. Well, there's uh, we have a locations department, and they're very good. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. Jeff Karen, the location guy. They go to places, you know. They go to the area where we want to shoot, and they drop leaflets in people's, uh, you know. I mean, there's some places they get rented out a lot. Right. Yeah. If you, if you, I've seen a lot of movies where I'm like, I've shot in that place. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's a bunch of places that always get, <laughs> yeah, you know, always get used. They can't wait to have you. Yeah, but there's other places that, uh, yeah, you you go approach somebody. These guys have. There's an art to that. Like yeah, going to knock on right. somebody's door. Would you mind if we, amazing. we break, Take over your break house? at least three things in your house? <laughs> <laughs> how uh, how accurate uh, was that as uh, far as Jerry goes? <laughs> did, Jerry? Did Jerry have to act for that at all? Jerry? <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny. No, he's such a sweet guy. Yeah. He's one of the nicest guys ever. He never talks to me that way. No, he's a very it's nice hilarious. guy. Well, when I opened for Jerry back when I was like 18, yeah. you know, he was a little rough with me, but he probably <laughs> should have been. If I had an 18-year-old comic open for me, right, for me right. I would be reflexively Ooh. mean to them, I think. Right, really? Just, uh, you know, what the fuck do you think you're doing, you know? But, <laughs> yeah. no, Jerry's a very sweet guy. And, and he, I'm actually, I think it was very generous of him to be, you know, he's pretty... He was pretty cold in the thing. It was. Thing. It and was it, so funny to watch, yeah, man. Yeah. And, and just like, throws me uh -huh. under the bus for the audience. And Oh, yeah. Right. yeah completely. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I like how he gets upset at you because you should have known, like when yeah. you show up. And well, that, that, I'm like, not sure like, that came across. Like, the thing was that it's the, hilarious. Lou, Lou, he's like Louis the Hamptons. Right. Yeah, fucking benefit. Yeah, and he's like, man, it, like you should have known. And I look like <laughs> shit. And also the a thing I don't know if it was lost in the audience is that it was supposed to be a five o'clock show. Right, right. The show starts at five, not and I showed show up at five. At five. five. Right, yeah. Because like, yeah, you, well, under your breath, it's five. <laughs> it's five. <laughs> right. I, I gotta here. admit, I stole that a little bit from uh, Goodfellas. Oh, really? You remember it when he's like, "It's my mother's name." Yeah. <laughs> when he keeps saying it, remember the guy who has the car. Oh, it's my like, mother's what name. I say, don't buy anything. Don't get it. Right, right. my mother's name. <laughs> don't buy it. Then it cools down, and they stop talking. And he's just like, it's my, it's my mother's, mother's name. name. What's that? And he's, <laughs> so I did. A, I was being that guy, and it's I said, "What's with you?" It's at five o'clock. Yeah, it's five o'clock. <laughs> it's at five. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I think he, people are gonna yeah. love the episode. So, do you get suggestions on set from people? Like, like, hey, how about if I do? Or maybe we could do that. Like, like Colin rewriting like that. fucking Crocodile Dundee too. <laughs> like, because you seem like you would handle that really rather well. Yeah, you just kind of go, oh yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. no, no yeah, no, let's no, go no. ahead and do what's uh, what's written. <laughs> what I've planned. <laughs> yeah, I got a great idea. Yeah, yeah, it's mm -hmm. hard to do like to not to not want to be a people pleaser in those moments just to kind of do what you got to do it's not hard no no i don't have a hard time telling shutting somebody down <laughs> i really don't like, did that we came come here with to a, do something did that come with a couple of seasons or were you like no, instantly I'm, well i haven't had a lot of people trying to yeah it's changed okay. shit but uh, if somebody's got that kind of gumption or you know that that in them that spirit <laughs> that yes. spunk spirit you want to crush only it only takes a couple it takes once or twice you just go no no don't uh, don't don't do anything different. But like the guy Ooh. with the and then they lose the. You got to have a lot of fucking God. nerve to go like. Well, I'm gonna keep trying, right? Yeah, well, the guy yeah. with the tray, like just the ability to tell that guy like that's you're doing that wrong. Yeah, you're <laughs> like I'm such a people pleasing fruit. Like just the fact that you could do that. Is um, that does come with years of experience because at first you do as a director you want to be like I want everybody to be happy here. I want everybody to say I was the nicest director they ever worked right? with. Right. And you do that a couple of times, and you get fucked. And then you watch the show; it's not what you wanted. And then other people criticize it, and none mm. of them go, none of them name the guy with been the tray. Could have been taken care of, yeah, right there at the moment. So, so. You, after a while, you go like, "I am not. I don't give a fuck <laughs> how much anybody likes me. <laughs> That's not the important. We're getting part, this yeah. right." Yeah. And also, there's a there's a kind of a instinctive reflex with crews that they want they want to say this is the greatest show ever, mm -hmm. but it's a way to keep you happy so that you don't push yeah. for much right 
So I've always assumed that we're under the gun, that we're not going to have a good, you know, that we're going to not do well if we don't try hard. <laughs> yeah. But they also a good crew is they wanted to do a good show. Everybody wants to do good work. Sure. So I could get a little tough on the set as far as trying to get it right. Mm. Uh, and we all, I think everybody likes it though. And also, I don't keep people late. I don't do that. I don't stay till fucking two in the morning. But, you're also, mm. but they also know you're a nice guy in the end too. I don't know if they know that. I think Louis so. C.K. difficult like to work so. with. I don't think that'll be the headline that. now. TMZ. <laughs> yeah, right. Louis admitted he's very difficult to work for. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting to that point where we got to tear Louis back down to earth, right? That's what yeah. we do with our yeah, celebrities. Enough of that. Well, GQ. Enough of that. well yeah, now you're. In oh wow, that's, that's pretty that's fucking. Did you ever uh, think you'd see yourself on the cover of GQ magazine? No, I really didn't want to be on the cover of GQ magazine. Oh no, huh? That's not me at all. It's a great shot, though. It really is. Yeah, you look. You look rather handsome and uncomfortable. It's, it's, kind very, of the well, that's, yeah. it's perfect, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I hate doing a photo shoot like that. I really hate it. And I've gotten away <laughs> with covers where I'm in a black t-shirt doing nothing. Right. You know? I've gotten away with that, and now nobody will do that now. Right. They need you to do so something GQ else. So GQ said, we'll put him on the cover, but he has to put on something interesting. He has something to do a cover, like a real too. photo shoot. Right. And I did it because um, that's a high-profile cover. And it means I don't have to do a bunch of little shitty fucking, right. you know, picture of me and Aziz Ansari looking off balance. Right. Or <laughs> <laughs> some uh, next to a pool or something. Yeah. No, that um, one's like front and center <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. You walk into a store, you will see that and right there. That yeah. was one day with a reporter, one day at yeah. the studio, and but, it covers a lot of ground. Right. So it means I don't like doing any of this stuff. So it means I don't it's, have to do a lot of other stuff. But it's perfect. And I, I mean this as a compliment. You didn't sell out to be on the cover of GQ. That's you. That being, is me. Being awkward in a really nice tailored they asked, suit. They asked me to wear a spray tan. They had a spray can no, of tan. Man. Really? I bring my own makeup person to photo shoots for the opposite reason that most people <laughs> So I don't have to put any makeup on. Right. Most people do it to make sure how great they look. Right. But mine is to ward away like he's, no, he's not going to do this. He's got a guy and then... Uh, you, and who does nothing. They don't do anything. <laughs> yeah, she does, doesn't do anything. So we, we hang out. Does during, she at least carry around some cases? She's of got all shit okay. laid out, <laughs> but, but she does nothing. <laughs> That's totally true. Just touches you with that triangle piece of foam with nothing yeah, on it. That's right. <laughs> yeah, anti shine yeah. maybe. It looks like she's looks like she's doing <laughs> yes, stuff. There's nothing on and it. And so the photographer said we, we have this funny. spray tan. She said ninety nine percent of the guys wear the spray tan. And yeah. I said I'm the one percent. I shouldn't even be on the cover. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it took a while to say no to it. Right. But I just keep saying no with a smile. No, I will not do it. Mm, wow. What was their reasoning for want you wear a spray tan when you're because it evens out your face and it would have given me some, uh, but if you had seen me with a spray tan, you would have oh, been like, oh, have. fuck you. <laughs> oh, fuck oh, you. Man, this dick. <laughs> so it took some doing to look. And she said to me, they're going to do it anyway, but in post, it's going to look worse. They, I was like, all right, let them do it. They yeah. didn't do much. I'd rather look uh, touched up. I'd, I'm happy if the, the story is they had to do so much Photoshop to that guy. <laughs> That's fine. But to be like, is he trying to look like right, he has right, a, right. like a brown tan? <laughs> Bronze. Yeah. Oh, uh, Jesus then, Christ. Uh, we're just catching up here at SNL for the second time. Wow. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Yeah. And the monologue was amazing. The monologue was fantastic. We played the whole thing here. We wow, loved thank it. You. We loved the yeah, monologue. That was, that was to me the brave, whole, too. when they asked me to do it, I thought the monologue is the whole thing yep. for me. Right. And so I worked really hard on it. That's probably the hardest I've worked on a set. Like right. how many times I ran it in the clubs. Yeah. And I tried to run it in places that were bad. <laughs> you know, because when I go sometimes to the cellar, I get a lot of goodwill. Right. That doesn't help me get the right. thing right. And also from the first time I did the monologue... The first thing that I was surprised by when I did SNL the first time is when I looked at the audience, I'm like, these are not cool comedy people. Right. Mm. They're tourists. Yeah. You know, they're from the middle of America, right. which is who I play to when I'm on the road. Yeah, yeah. But it's not a New York vibe. No, no. So I thought I got to get this wow. set to be foolproof. My feeling was I might with this. I didn't want to do a set that pandered to that crowd. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to have it ready so that if nobody laughed, I'd still look okay. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. I wanted to be good enough at that set that if I got silence, I could still. Because when you're watching somebody bomb on TV, you can only tell by their face if they're bombing. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the laughs are not that big a quotient in the sound yeah, mix. So yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> if the guy looks looks like he's doing all right, you could buy that he's doing okay. So yeah. I, I went to bad places, like, you know, basement of bars in the east, so Lower East Side. There's, like, some stand-up gigs in these places now. Wow, And man. I was looking on websites for shitty little no stand-up shit. venues. No shit. And I did, you know, there was one where there was water just dripping in front of me on stage. This oh. place down in a Orchard Street or something. I don't know. Anyway, wow, man. So when I was that, there, I was like, I'm, I don't. If they don't like it, it's not going to go. Right, anyway. right. But the fucking crowd was good. You and know they, how many people were happy you came into their place, yeah, they, and now they're hearing that you picked it because it was a shitty little place. <laughs> 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 yeah, they're thinking they're happening finally because yeah, exactly. Louis C.K. walked in. No, no, yeah. and Lauren really helped me with the monologue actually because yeah. the first in dress I did twelve minutes. And uh, I came off of there feeling like that's the greatest set I ever did. This was dress rehearsal. Yeah. I was headed for a disastrous because it's very bad to have a good dress rehearsal mm. for something when then and then do the real show. Uh huh. Anyway, I was so excited, and my manager said, "Don't let him cut anything. It's perfect the way it is." So I went up to the big meeting they have between dress rehearsal and the show. Right. And Lauren said, "So you did twelve minutes in the monologue. How much do you want to do on air?" Oh, and I said I want to do twelve, and he goes, "You're not doing, you're not doing twelve. Wow! <laughs> he said you could do seven, and I said, "What if I just keep going? What if I, what if I go over?" <laughs> and he goes, "Well, then we'll know that you have no discipline or ability to edit yourself." <laughs> and he said, "This is in front of everybody." <laughs> Holy, Holy fuck. and I was like, "All right, <laughs> no discipline." <laughs> yeah, he and he goes, around. he goes, there, no. are, he goes, there are cuts in that monologue. It was good, but there were stops and starts. There were wow. places you could cut, and I was like, fuck you. You know, I was really <laughs> right. mad. And then uh, later, the timing lady uh, said, we're one minute under for the show. They take, figure out the timing. And, and I said, well, then I'll do eight, nine minutes. And Lauren said, hey, calm down. <laughs> That's the first time he ever talked to me like that. Like, calm down. <laughs> so I said, I want to see the monologue. I want to see it from dress. Show it to me. And he goes, go ahead. Give him a, you know. It was a little t tiny bit tense because I was being really defensive. No shit. Mm. And so I watched the monologue from the dress and I was like, holy fuck, there is a lot of cuts in this. This is not that good. Like I was embarrassed. I, I, he saved me from going out wow, there. Man. Because wow, man. Because there's a bunch of bits that did okay, but I blew them up in my head. It's the worst case scenario is you do a, a rehearsal <laughs> right. and you're like, I'm the greatest ever. It's all gold. And then on air, I <laughs> yeah. would have fucking stunk for wow. too long. Wow. So I sat with uh, Michael Shea, who's a comic who writes for the show. Yeah, he's really funny. Very funny guy. And he sat with me to have another critical eye. It's very weird and embarrassing to ask another comedian, do you think this is funny? So I knew that was a good test of it. No well, it brought me back down to the earth that I was on when I was doing the sets, <laughs> yeah. which is let's expect this not to go well. And then I left that earth with the dress rehearsal, I'm the best there ever fucking was, and I can do 12 <laughs> minutes. And then with Michael Shea, I'm like, please tell me if this is funny. I don't know if this is funny. I don't even think I have five. Yeah, I don't think that's exactly. Oh, I started to think. Yeah, I don't think yeah. I can have five. Yeah, can might you have do four. that joke twice? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, at least Michael wow. had the balls to tell you. That, that's hard to tell the biggest comic in the country, look, that one you should cut. I mean, it was for him. really, really and helpful. What time was all this going on? How close to the actual this show? This is, you know, the dress rehearsal. Fuck, I, I think it starts at like nine or something. I mean, you don't have a lot of time. How so, nerve so they're getting ready. Hours yeah, there's a thing, and there's a woman coming on, you know, three minutes to air, and this is uh, fucking live air, and I'm watching the other one, I'm going cut, and trying to cut in my head. You still watch it three minutes before air? Yeah. And I was watching it and kind of cutting in my head. Are you just shitting yourself at this point? I mean, uh, Yeah, honestly. but I've been in that position. Right, so, right. So... Yeah, so then when I hit the door, the back Amazing. of the door that you come out of for the monologue, right. I was like, I think I'm ready. Oh. I, th I know what I'm not doing. Um, and we'll just see how it goes. So that uncertain, nervous energy, you fucking need that yeah. to do that kind of thing well. Right. If you come out like, hey, hey I got, I got this, this. Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. fucked. So I, I invested like three weeks of preparation to feel that way. And I lost it, and when I almost, I could have, you know. Did it help? Did it help you to kind of have that shit to go over right before? Because then you're not focusing, like you know, you're not just sitting there in front of the mirror going, "Okay, ten yeah, minutes." That's true. Okay, yes, nine minutes. That's true too. The more you focus on the actual work and yeah. the content, that's the only thing that's going to save you. Mm. It's it's thinking about the spectacle. And I said it. Sam Smith, the musical guest, he had never been on anything. They found mm -hmm. him at South by Southwest, and I asked him before the show, "How are you doing?" And he said. I'm shitting myself. <laughs> Irish English guy. I'm shitting myself. 
And I said to him what I was thinking, which is just think about the song. Just think about why you wrote that song or your, what are you singing about? Don't think about I'm on TV. Anytime right. you're thinking about I'm on TV, yeah, yeah, yeah. what could this mean for me? And am I this good? And <laughs> worthless. <laughs> worthless. Yeah. All you should be thinking of is this is what this joke is about and this is what this joke is about. Because no matter how good you are, you're always going to read Twitter and realize, oh, I'm a cunt and I suck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. None of that's going to pay off for you. Uh, None he, of that's going to help you. He killed it, too. You Ooh. couldn't tell it. It's Sam. Yeah, he did a good job. Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought yeah. so. It's nice. That's kick. fascinating, that behind the scenes stuff. Wow, you're cutting and editing right up to showtime. Yeah, it just seems like there's less time to panic if you're working. Right. Yeah. Fucking. So that's how, right. How many minutes was it in the end? Eight? Eight or, minutes. It was eight. Yeah. It was, an, I know it was, about, I don't remember it was about God and it was about, uh, oh, yeah. Dying. I forget what it was about, but it was, I remember we watched, I watched it and we played. It was amazing. We loved it. Like, what a ballsy fucking live was, TV model. Well, you know what I was impressed by was they don't vet your dialogue at all, your monologue. They said mm. nothing to me about it. Like, yeah. I thought, am I going to have to defend these jokes? Right, right. right. And I yeah. actually, the thing about somebody's got to check under the, the porch of God's porch to see if there's a dead lady under it. <laughs> yeah. I thought about doing that only at air, because uh. I thought if I do it at dress, they might say something. But then I just felt it's not it's not fair. They were so nice to me. Yeah. So yeah. I did it. Nobody from standards or anything came up to me. Oh, good for you. Not Not a word. So a dress rehearsal, it's just the exact same show. Yes. And uh, is that the case where there's a meltdown or a disaster, they can just air it? No, there's like almost hmm. twice the show. Oh, okay. The show at dress, dress rehearsal is so they can choose the sketches and stuff. They do like, if there's like eight sketches on the show, they do like, I don't know, 15, wow. 16 at dress. Wow. I probably have the numbers wrong, but they do. And it's they so can they pick can and choose what like really what worked. worked and... Yeah, well, how guys like Daryl haven't survived for that many years in that high pressure. That's a high pressure it is. performing situation. I love it. I, it's my favorite thing. I love really? I after, especially after this last time. It's so mm. fucking fun. Mm. You feel so alive mm. for that <laughs> whole week. The amount of pressure on you every day, and the amount of stuff that goes on, and it's such a. It, you just your heart's beating all week long. And they still have those crazy schedules, or have they calmed down? Where everyone stays up for. Well, there the writers are up all night, <clears throat> pretty much every night. And, and they're uh, punchy. And, There's something about being punchy, though. Yeah. You know, it's you good. Tell. It's good for you, I think. And I to mean, these point. are young, young uh, sketch mm. writing is a young guy's woman's thing. So, right, there you are some veterans leave, there. There's a few veterans. You get to leave after the week, and then they just another. They say week yeah, Monday morning the they're there with fucking. They got to start thing. over, and it's How crazy. It's week that? after. W right, that's right. crazy. Yeah. I wonder what it's like to have a douchey uh, guest host. Like, I'm sure some of the guys that guest hosts aren't nice or comedians mm -hmm. who understand humor that well. Mm -hmm. and that's got to mm -hmm. be really frustrating or difficult. Yeah, I'm sure they have no problem telling the new host who the assholes were. Yeah, you get to find. Out. <laughs> well, like, yeah. On the table read day, there was this wonderful spread of food. Yeah. And they said, um, and it was from, and it had a little sign on it from Lena Dunham. And she had just hosted. Mm. So she bought everybody dinner for the table read. Like she sent wow, dinner nice. from a nice restaurant. And they said to me, Lena Dunham did this. And I said, oh, I ain't going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sending you dinner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> and so I stopped that tradition. That probably could have been a tradition. <laughs> right, right. That would have gone on for years. Then I did it. And then the next but, person. But I said, I'm going to stop it here <laughs> yeah, and yeah. save the next Seth Rogen from having to do it. Right. Yeah, Lena Dunham sent us dinner and Louie left a bag of chips. Right. And that was it. Yeah, <laughs> so for stuff. someone to clean up. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> but. And then on the other side of the spectrum, yeah, you get to hear stories about, you know, Justin Bieber's a fucking giant asshole. So, <laughs> oh, shit. And I, I don't, 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 please that. don't shatter it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Such a dreamy doll. Yeah, we're all surprised by that. Yeah. Why was he an asshole? He's a it? mean dick. Really? Uh, right. You know, whatever. I'm betraying well, yeah. somebody's trust, but yeah, fuck whatever. that kid. Fuck that Fuck kid. That kid. <laughs> yeah. There's also uh, uh, the uh, Common Core little controversy. Oh, Ooh, Jesus. look yeah, out. I know. I know. Look out. But good people for Lily, are, man, because now people are paying though. attention. People really are amazing at their defense of something uh -huh. that, first of all, is so new mm -hmm. and has, has proven imperfections mm -hmm. in it. Everything but does. Just it's education. Wanna, right. But but they really just want to dig in and yeah. this is the new great thing. Right. And as a parent, you are seeing something not so good about. It. Yeah. And when people get that way, often when you look at their like, I don't mix it up online and I don't go on Twitter and mix it up with folks. <laughs> yeah. I'm amazed at people like yourself. Oh, I will. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I am the worst. Who will take someone who has four followers. Yes. And just make them a star. <laughs>
to me, it's an, uh, a means to an end. Right. I need to get my word out there, but I need someone to ask me why that should be. But you do it every day here. Well, I know. You get your word out. Yeah. Oh, I know. I have a microphone. <laughs> I have a world's ear. Yeah. But, but how, how old is your daughter? That was, that was her homework? Uh, nine years old. I have a 12-year-old and a nine-year-old. You, you, Louis Print showed one of the pictures oh, of the I, question. I yeah. And I looked at it, and I actually got the answer, and I was proud of myself. <laughs> I'm a just realizing she was a kid. Third grade. Yeah. And I felt Third good grade. about it. A lot of people write, what's the big deal? Numbers three. Answers three. Right. Answers three. Give you're me another 35. one. Five. Yeah. Yeah. Give you're wrong. <laughs> Give me another one. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. They don't get the point. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, nah, it's been a hassle for I mean, what made me do anything about it was that, um, you know, at school, they've tried to organize some you know, rallies and stuff to get... The, it's a real problem for our school. Mm -hmm. um, so the principal, like, wrote l letters to the parents saying, please help us to, you know, get the word out about this. Right. Because what happened was there was a principal at a Brooklyn school. I forget her name or the school, but she said these tests, the English tests, not the math ones, the ELA test, she said it's unbelievably over the top. The the, the answers are unanswerable. The questions are unanswerable. <laughs> and then so the the people, the standardized testing people and the and the DOE, the Department of Education, said, well, she's the only one. She's the only one who said who thinks that. She's a, uh, an anomaly. So mm. all the other principals said, no, it's, we all feel this way. So there was, an, there was actually a need to get the word out that it's to have yeah. some unanimity and say it's not <clears throat> one person. Right. So, and my daughter, my 12-year-old, wrote a letter to, just on her own. She's, I asked her, she was writing something. I said, what are you writing? She said, I'm writing a letter to the Department of Education about the testing because she hates it. Because she wants to learn shit. She's a devoted student. Shit. <laughs> so I thought, well, geez, my daughter's fucking doing something. So um, I should do something I'm capable of doing, which is just write this one little tweet. I just oh, was going to write all. one. <laughs> that's all. But then you put something that inflammatory out there. Right. And then people go, they come after you. So because it was something that meant something, I had to try to clarify it through right. more tweets. And to put these pages out there, and um, and then defend that, and it kind of got <laughs> crazy. Yes, it does snowball. Yeah, you, you said something lot. like the thing you hate about Twitter is you say something, and then someone responds, and then a bunch of people attack them. The thing you hate about Twitter is exactly what I love about. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, some guy Kill. wrote. Some guy wrote. You shouldn't be commenting about this because you're not an expert. So, which mm. is a very touchy issue with this sure. whole thing, right? Which is that people that are experts think they should make policy and everyone should not right. only accept the policy, but don't don't even question about it. it. Right. Don't even say like what's so isn't everything helped by dialogue? Isn't absolutely <laughs> everything helped by information? Like we all must be the the thing of which we of which we do not speak. <laughs> <laughs> you know? This idea that it's this, there's a cloak over it. Don't shh, quiet. Right. Common core is work. It's trying to work. <laughs> Don't say anything about it. And you being a parent it makes yeah. you. Well, I'm not the a, end user. You're the end user, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, and in a very important way, it's fucking children's education. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't have some power to say this has to go. And I didn't even say this has to go. I said, we're having, we're struggling. Mm -hmm. We're struggling. So. Often very young people that don't look like they have kids that have, you know, <laughs> around usually 1,200 Twitter followers. Yeah. Because they have a blog somewhere. They go, you shouldn't. The guy goes, you should not be talking. Oh. because And all I wrote back was, I have a chi two children in a public school in a state where testing is an issue. So right. I don't need your permission to comment. It, it wasn't even really hitting yeah, back. It's, it's affecting you but directly. But then there's just the this death rain of shit. Right, just people right. going, you fucking asshole, you cocksucker. Faggy. Don't you fucking, you fucking suck yeah, a yeah. bag of dick. <laughs> Fuck you. And then it's embarrassing uh, and it's tough shit. to take. Yeah. And yeah. your daughter's just frustrated because she really wants to learn and the testing just gets in the way constantly. Constantly, you right? spend like six months preparing for the right. thing, and then the test is three days. Three days of testing, right. like she's trying to get a, to pass the bar exam. Amazing, <laughs> and none of it is teaching her anything. You're Nothing's not going in. Right. Right. Of you're, course, what, what is it like memorization of? Th you're not really learning anything. Well, I mean, it's a tricky thing mm. because they they change this. I don't know. It's, I've learned a lot about it enough to know that I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> it's very tricky. It's a very tricky it, issue. Yeah. But I do think it's way out of whack right now. And it depends on where you are. Right. 
in some states they roll out Common Core. In other words, they institute, they use the tests that use Common Core language and the importance of the tests. Like right. so they start young, so that a new generation of students is being taught this, and then it moves with them and every mm. year behind them. But here in New York, they just adopted Common Core for everybody all at once. Mm. So all of a sudden, kids that are being taught the old way have to pass a test with the new criteria the next year. And everybody flunked, like New York State oh, did very shit. badly, because they, you know, were going to. Right. And there's people that think more nefarious things are going on. Mm. That Bill Gates and the people who at Pearson who published the tests wanted Common Core to fail so that they could step in. It's and, obviously a conspiracy. Yeah, that's the way some people think of it. I don't yeah. think of it that way. I think I I start with the premise that everybody's trying to do their best sure. effort, but that's not always a good thing either. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. Bill Gates brought education to many countries in Africa and wherever else. Sure, yeah, yeah. Places that didn't have any schools, and he just built schools. Gave them computers and windows and all that stuff. Ah, yeah, yeah. Scumbag. Uh, <laughs> well, he, yeah, exactly. He He's devoted most of his life to philanthropy. And so he's gone to countries and given education to whole countries that didn't have any schools. That's well, you're, why you're like the first person to give a billion dollars to... Uh, to charities, yeah, like him and him and Warren Buffett are dollars. both. They, they have this the whole thing about, and it's great. Yeah. But then I think what, and this is total unsupported conjecture. It's what <laughs> I've heard people say, is that he wanted to uh, do it here, but there's already the schools. There's there are schools here. <laughs> like it's <laughs> not it's not a rubble here. Right, right. right. So he's frustrated. <laughs> Because in order to affect change in America, you have to go slow and get your hands dirty. You have to, you know, have to really talk to people that feel like they are entitled to mm -hmm. a certain level. And so the idea was cr change standardized testing like all at once to say, here's what you have to know. Everybody fails, and mm -hmm. then you can say the schools aren't working. So I now go, let's, I'm, right, right. So I'll come in and save the day. I got yeah. a good idea. To but that's make them I work. don't believe that's true. But I believe there's elements of that in there. I mean, from working in movies, the first step of um, when a movie gets handed in by a director, the first thing they want to say is it's bad, so that they can now help fix it. <laughs> uh, but you first you have to say something bad, right, in order to fix it. So you make a test. You go. How do you how do you evaluate it? I'm gonna make a test where everybody has to guess what color I'm thinking of, and if they can't do it, they're all they all flunk. And then I'm gonna. Wrong. That's like the yeah. worst version yeah. of it that I don't believe in. Right. But it, that's how crazy an issue is. Some people think that's what's going on, and that you know. And then Pearson is making a bunch of money by writing tests. Mm. But somebody's always made money writing yeah, tests. Yeah. How, so, how's the homework? Because my kids are a little a few years behind yours. I'm panicking. How much homework am I going to have to deal with? Well, homework with is kids? a good thing. I mean, I hope my kids are challenged by school. I hope homework's hard. But, I hope everything they do is harder than what they're capable of. Right. That's how you get good at shit. Right. The idea that homework and tests is supposed to be a way for a kid to feel like they're really smart, then they're going to stay at a fucking stupid, self-congratulatory <laughs> third grade level until they're fucking... I just... I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not... It should be really hard. It should be too hard, and, you, and it should be hard as a parent to sit with your kid and get. But remember, their we, uh, when we were growing up, you, you were at school all day. You came home, maybe you got an hour to run around, and then you had three hours of homework every night. Sit there. That just doing doesn't make sense homework. to me. Yeah. Well, it, why not? Why it, doesn't? It? Because they should be learning a lot at school. No. Why do they have to now continue like to because work that's out their, shit after, that's, after, work, after school? Because I understand a little bit. Don't get me wrong. But the idea, the, the idea isn't that the teacher's job is to just plug information into the kid's head, and then the kid the right. kid has to learn how to how to find the information for themselves. I'm, Homework is more important. I'm being selfish because I got you know my siblings <laughs> all have just don't want no, to my, have to my siblings all have older kids and yeah. they, they call me and they're like we're doing their fucking homework every night. Yeah, we're we're now part time teachers because we have to work uh, you know work them through all this shit. Well, yeah, the thing yeah. you should be doing you shouldn't help them figure it out, but you right. keep the thing you can do for your kid if you're nice is keep them company while they're having to do it. It's hard to sit there by yourself and yeah. after a while the kid is li literally laying on her back looking at the ceiling and moaning <laughs> right. that she can't fucking do it and when it gets that and i'm trying to make dinner and she's doing that and then when it gets that bad i go and sit next to her and just keep going come on 
come on and you maybe read it out loud motivation. with her. And that's yeah. how this started because I'm reading this thing. I'm like, oh, look, honey, you just have to look at the. Don't think of the whole big thing here. Do one problem. Okay, what does this problem say? And I read it. And I'm like, what the fuck? What fuck the fuck is that? Sense? <laughs> that makes no sense. That makes no. And I'm like, are they teaching you this? She goes, no. They just put it on test prep. They crunch pe- test prep so you can sort of learn how to answer these questions. Jesus. Mm. Um, and they're poorly written questions. They're not intuitive. They're not em- empathetic. Right. In order to teach a third grader, you need to understand how a third grader thinks. Uh-huh. You can't just be some academic somewhere who says, this This is a very appropriate pattern of thinking for a young mind. You have to go, I know a third grader named Evan, and he probably would never fucking get this. <laughs> so if you're trying to bring a kid to a new idea, you know, give him a path. Don't just stick the new idea in some other language. Yeah. Right. And go, if you don't get this, then fuck you and fuck your stupid teacher. <laughs> Got it. Definitely God got damn, it. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like I always say, you give a man yeah. a fish, he eats for a day, you teach a man a fish, he eats forever. Back to you, Lou. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, did you eat uh, pizza with uh, Diane Sawyer? Yeah, yeah. How was that? Slice. At Ben's, right? Yeah, Down Ben's, in the village? That's where I get my pizza. <laughs> right. And the opening I liked of... her. She's a nice... I mean, I grew up... It was Diane Sawyer. She's, she's one of the one of the relics she's... of my youth. So. Yes. How'd yeah, she look sure. up? I don't, I don't, she would, I'm sure she would yeah, appreciate Yeah, she probably would that. appreciate your phraseology. Oh, it's so nice to meet you. You're a relic of my youth. <laughs> <laughs> You're a cunt I remember from way back. <laughs> How'd she look up close? I used to have a little thing for Diane Sawyer. She was she always a little very, sexy. She's yeah. an attractive woman. She is, right? Most definitely. Yeah. And she's very nice. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, that's boring. I don't yeah, tell you not I, at all. I don't know. I'm just uh, thinking of all the stuff you've Yeah, been. she was cool. Was but, she like a fan of yours? I mean, she was, I don't know, you know, at her point in her career, like they just sort of tell her, there's this guy, and then she watches three things, and she's like, uh-huh. I got it, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> oh, there you are. There's a, pit, there's a little taste of the interview uh, right yeah, there. Yeah. You know, what did she ask you about? Uh, you know, I don't know. She asked me about doing the show and being a dad and stuff like that. I don't know. That Did, shit's embarrassing. Is it? Know. Yeah. Yeah. How, how are the like kids talking about yourself all fucking... <laughs> it's so... How are the kids handling the, uh, the upswing in the fame? It's okay. I mean, they're mostly... Their experience of it is... They're proud of me when things happen, you know? Right. But sure, it's just, yeah. hey, kids, I, I wanted a Grammy. I won a Grammy, and it was literally like I got a, I got a, uh, an email saying congrats i was making dinner right hey guys i want a grammy and then from the other room that's great daddy that's it, that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's <laughs> um but are they getting uh not harassed but uh, more, 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 more ass questions ass. at school and stuff from there i don't think that much no okay. i mean i think uh, mostly they just live in their lives when people know you every day in practical life they don't you're not mm. interesting to them right. you're just another person which right. is my favorite way to exist yeah i don't like being set apart right I, it makes me really uncomfortable <laughs> like if i'm at a gate at a to get on a plane i just want to be like a bunch of people at a gate eating a carmelo thing and right reading the times right but you when got- somebody goes oh my god <laughs> Oh shit! Can I get a picture with you? And then everybody in the gate turns and looks at me. Yeah. And some people who hadn't noticed me go, "Oh yeah," and other people are like, "Who? Why? Who's who is he?" Who is right. he? And, and then that uh, person walks, and I go, "No, I'm not going to take your picture. So, so picture with you." So then they also go, "Guy, he seems like kind of an asshole." <laughs> and then I'm like, "Now everyone thinks we you're have an asshole." Been some, and... You know, I just want to be some dude at the gate, mm-hmm. some anonymous guy. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone give you but shit for that? Or no? What Was, has anyone been like confrontational or nasty about that? Or they all okay? mostly not? I mean, I get when I uh, people ask me for pictures and I say no uh, they always look a little surprised and then <laughs> 90% of the people adjust and go I'm alright but there are people mm. that they walk away and they look really bummed yeah and right. I feel nothing <laughs> <laughs> I feel no. what percentage I of do people it. that ask you do you actually take a picture with zero zero right zero okay that's what I thought yeah there's yeah. also then other people ask too I that's... don't like doing it I don't like to live in that moment <laughs> why should I do something I don't like doing <laughs> That fake There's smile, no reason. Fake camaraderie. Look, yeah, they come on, and then a joke yeah. about, oh, yeah, come on, you don't know how to use the camera. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, that new technology. I know, no, it's all right. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, oh, it's right. blurry. Can we take one more? Yeah. No. No, you can't. No, <laughs> can't take one. Zero percent. We, I like that. It's uh, down to zero. Now. It's Was zero. it because they're bothering you with your kids? Like you're out with your children and people. If just... I'm with my kids. I'm rude about it. 
Yeah. If I'm with my kids and somebody says, "Can I get a picture with you?" I just go, "No, no, no." Wait. No, I, if it's if lift, I'm just on the street by, by myself, the arm, no. <laughs> yeah. Look what I have. <laughs> yeah, I've actually been with my kids where, like, if they're getting ahead of me a little, like as we're walking, I catch up to them for that protection. Yeah. <laughs> they protect. Yeah, no, it's totally. So like, oh, look, it's Louis. Let's we, get a picture. Oh, it's Louis and his kids. Yeah. Let's lay off. Yeah. We we think the opposite. We leave here. We kind of just mingle around the building, just hoping. Hey, yeah. where's just hoping. Uh, someone with? I'm mean, uh, like, well, like <laughs> camera. Well, I guess uh, yeah. right, I'm gonna go home. Yeah. I right. say words like radio really loud. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> radio on the radio with you guys. What do you think, Opie? Yeah, what do you uh, think, Anthony? Yes. <laughs> we look it around, mingling. Hey, Op, good show today. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> And then people are like, well, if they're saying that, it couldn't be those guys. (laughs) 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 Oh, that'd be nice to get to the Louis C.K. point. Ah, not now. No. No, damn you. What What point did it get annoying? Like, I haven't gotten annoyed by it, but I don't have children, and I don't, you know, I haven't really been asked at awkward times. But at what point did you go, like, fuck, I hate this? Well, the struggle (laughs) is that I don't have any, I have no problem with the person that asks i don't think they're doing it i think they're they're being nice they're actually being very nice sure a little support uh but they don't (laughs) know what it would feel like if it was once a day it would be okay but i get asked a few times a day so and if i did it i would get asked more because every time you take a picture with somebody you it people start coming towards you yeah that's just where i'm at right now i don't think this is gonna last this is gonna (laughs) die down (laughs) yeah when we did lucky louie there was like one month uh, when it went on the air, that I, it was crazy. Yeah. How much people came up to me everywhere I went. And then it went away. Like 100% away. <laughs> so I know what it feels like right, right, to right. have this and then right. have it go away to the point of like, wow. Oh, boy. That was, I wish someone asked that a me little for bit. a picture. I wish, you, I wish you didn't take pictures. I got a picture of me, you, Rick, and Pam Adlon on the last day of shooting. Mm-hmm. What a fucking fat pig I looked like. Oh, oh so Red Jimmy. eyes, too. Oh, no, You've never a, been a fat person. Was, I'm serious. telling you, it was an uh, awful. Mental problem. No, no. It was an awful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Awful. Do, do you, uh, that year you took off uh, yeah. between uh, the seasons, yeah. does that help you with just having life experiences to write into the show? Yeah, I just hung out with my kids and uh, yeah. and uh, breathed and lived life. And there was plenty to do on the well, You did a couple did, movies too there, though. Did a couple movies. Those were like a couple you know, little movies there, five though. to eight days of shooting. Oh, that was it. Very short shoots. But I'm just thinking, like, in between a shorter, uh, in between seasons, yeah. you'd be like, oh, I got to write something. Uh, what happened? Or this, or this would make a good story. Mm-hmm. Is it like, ah, good, I have all this stuff that I lived and that kind of helps or is it just a little bit yeah. but mostly it's yeah having a more normal humbling regular life mm. it's not like events that take place right it's right just feeling what life feels like yeah and and when, that, when life feels like making TV shows all the time I mean the last one of the last stories I did last season was about being on a TV show right and that's when you start going all right we're starting to Make a thing about the thing we're making about the thing we're making. Right. So, let's get the fuck out of this for a little while. Because it, it <laughs> bang off. I, I just asked that because it showed in the um, kind of natural. You're just living your life. Uh, feel yeah, of the first yeah. few episodes. Yeah, and it's here. not like oh, this happened. I have a story. It's right, just like right. I remember what it's like to just be a dude. Mm. You're cooking dinner with, for your kids yeah. and stuff, and it's uh, goddamn yeah, goddamn adorable. That's what my <laughs> usual days are like. <laughs> are you writing down um, ideas all year though? Because you said you took some time like away from thinking of stand up and thinking of this. Like, are you putting shit down all all year? Like maybe something later. Maybe like Woody Allen writes like a note and he'll throw it in a drawer. Well, I, I'll like uh, I actually build in like there's like the month of June. It's worked out usually each year. I don't have a single creative thought. I just like <laughs> avoid it because you got to rest it, rest the the muscle or whatever. <clears throat> but usually around the spring, I, I write basic, like just with a actually with a just like a pen and notepad. Mm. Just start writing basic ideas. So this is a time I start you, writing scripts like in July or so. If you think of something, will you just go? If it's in that month, will you just go fuck it? It'll come back or it won't. <laughs> Yeah, I try. I really try to. Why stay you don't write it down? That's a gamble yeah, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. you would think you would at least write it down, throw it in a drawer. You'd like, think, okay. right? Yeah. So, no. I don't know. Maybe I'm lying a little bit. <laughs> well, Jimmy, no, I don't was know. Really I'll write myself fast. an email sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write myself an email sometimes. Oh, you do? Yeah. Because even if you're not thinking creatively, you just know, like, holy shit, that would so work. And, but when and I'm to let it go away, that's scary to me. Well, when I'm in that mode, it's because usually I'm pretty burnt. And I'm not. So you're not, not much is coming. So gotcha. I just don't think that way. I'm gotcha. always afraid of losing that. But if you know you have, if you have confidence in your writing and the fact that ideas are going to be there mm. and you're going to create.
create, it takes some of that pressure off to write every single moment down. I mean, I don't have a rain of ideas coming all the time. It's like, <laughs> you know, a really good idea comes like once every three months or something. Right. Like Jesus. something great. So, yeah, I, slow. I'm trip. amazed at how fast I turn around and like I think something's a good idea and the next mm -hmm. day I look at it and I just realize what a no talent hunk of shit I am. Like that's the, <laughs> that's the voice. Like, oh, that sounded great. Yeah, yeah no, that's always. Sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, mean. Mean. I mean, well, good. even when an audience slaps at something and then you think it's good, it must be good, and then you, it never gets a laugh again. Uh, and you think, oof, that yeah, was so good, and it wasn't. It, was <laughs> it wasn't. It was now, shit. now let me just second guess everything I do. Yeah, and then you need fifty <laughs> audiences to prove to you that it was bad because of that <laughs> one that laughed at it. But it was good. What happened? The yeah. worst is when it used to work and it doesn't anymore. It's like like we talked about that. It goes into that different part of your brain, and you were so smart when you said like it goes into that. It becomes like a function, mm -hmm. like a task part of your brain. It's yeah, it becomes part. a pro uh, uh, procedure. I learned that from at the. Natu Museum of Natural History. They have a brain and they show you how it works. Like a brain that's like has glowing parts. Sure. And they show you how it works. <laughs> then when you're learning something and you're like carving these paths in your brain to learn how to do something, mm -hmm. but once you learn it, it becomes a procedure, which means it's just a list of, of wow. things. Wow. So you just load the your brain just goes go to go to procedure A. Oof. It doesn't wow. go like do this then that and then maybe this will work. That's it how it goes, learned it. Thrup! And yeah, so becomes, jokes become that. Jokes become like, and you can tell a comic who's got to that place, and you can <laughs> yeah. feel it on stage. Like, I don't even, I'm thinking about everything but this. Wow. Like, I'm not even thinking about this. Wow. Wow. Doing the joke, then here's a pause. <laughs> Look that, then a <laughs> <laughs> So when it starts to get like that, I uh, uh, when jokes shit. start dying, right. I try to re remember what is this joke about and tell it again like I never told it. Like, explain the idea instead of the pattern. Yeah, get it off of the track. Yeah, get it off of the whole... <laughs> right. The rhythm and the certain word you said and then the face you made. And the the yeah. little spontaneous that, chuckle that you put such in. Such a brilliant way of explaining it. There's certain <laughs> jokes that just didn't feel right. Like, that's exactly what it was. Instead of ten different lines, mm -hmm. it became one line. It yeah. just became one action. <clears throat> well, yeah, exactly. Wow, that's an man. <laughs> How many more years for uh, the show, though? I don't know. I just finished this one, so it's the it's. Whenever I'm done with a year, I'm like, I want to just stop. Oh, really? Forever. Yeah, I never want to keep doing it. Right. But this year felt better. Right. It was harder. We did it. We had there's a hurricane in the. the, the we created a hurricane in, right. in the winter. <laughs> So it was awful. I like, remember you telling us about that geez, last yeah. time you were in. I can't yeah. wait to see that episode. That was hard, but that's that. It's coming later in the year. But uh, but I'm working now on uh, Zach Galifianakis. Uh, he's doing a show, a pilot for FX that I'm producing wow. through my company. Good for mm. you. Has so, he said what it's about, or is he not really? Saying I'm it? writing it with him. Okay. So we're shooting it actually in a couple of weeks. You really opened the and gates. That's at, exciting because Zach is the funniest fucking guy. He's great, mm. and, and you opened up the gates uh, for. For FX, well, Zach didn't need any me to meet him. No, I know, but he was but there's other star. shows coming now, and it all seems because you, you know you pushed that door open. I guess I don't know. I don't know what's out there that has anything to do with me, but um, but yeah, FX has maybe a little more courage to try some shit. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And what about uh, like hanging out and having fun and shit? Uh, doing much of that. <laughs> 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 you know, he wants to know if you're doing any of that. Doing much that. No, with uh, with work. Though, I mean, because it, yeah. it, people see you, they see you on TV, on your mm -hmm. show, interviews, and stuff like that. It's like you get much time to just fuck around and yeah, I build it into my year. Because this is yeah. right now I'm promoting the show. This was the best year ever because I had time to write it, and then we took so much longer to shoot mm. it, and then I edited it, and I'm done. They're all done. That's great. So now I'm promoting it, doing this shit. Right. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> Thanks. I think May 12th is like my last. Well, this is this is like the high watermark of promotion. <laughs> of this is the fun stuff. Yeah. Doing you guys. It's the fucking you know. Oh. Some of the other shit is awful. But the local news shows, the morning. Shows. I don't. I don't do those anymore. No, I, I, I should be doing them. Do them. I should anymore. be doing them. You're just taking money out of my own pocket <laughs> by not wanting to be oh, on those things. But it'll be over. I think May 12th. I'm doing. Jimmy Fallon, and that's it. And then after that, I'll have the whole. Then I block out. Then I'm aggressively relaxing. Right. And I'll take most of the summer. I won't work. A little boating. boating. I'll go out on the boating. boat. Well, how is the boat? Fucking guy. Would you? How many it, repairs in the off season? <laughs> not bad. Not too bad. <laughs> okay. We did. I did the the. Uh, I didn't do anything. Uh, I had it. <laughs> I had this repainted, done, yes. revarnished. 
Uh, and some others. Got a new tender, new dinghy. Nice. Right. Everybody, uh, everyone that has a boat's always off season. It's like, fucking new engine. God damn, I yeah. had to pull the old fucking engine out of it. And those things just cost uh, tons of money. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. So it's all kind of getting re. This is my first year with it, too. So uh, right. I'm doing it. And it'll be back in the water in like a week or so. Oh, you're excited. Yeah, I'm excited about that. I'm very excited about the whole summer. Oh, any big trips Uh, planned? We'll probably go up to, I want to take the boat further up, like maybe to Maine or somewhere this time. Mm, Nice. Uh, Mm -hmm. So I'll be doing that and yeah. Yeah, it's. Yeah, yeah. yeah, And I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to do any movies this year. Last summer I ended up using a lot of this Mm. summer doing that stuff. I'm not going to do the movies this time. I don't like movies. It's not fun. It really is. (laughs) It's fun if the movie's really great and the. You have a short amount of time there, right? But like, I've been offered big parts in movies, that, uh, but it's like a month mm. living in Shreveport, Louisiana, or someplace, right? And it's not worth it. It's wow. not worth what I would get out of it. Wow, I'd, it's we'll take any movie. Louis is like the <laughs> we'll opposite. No, not well, even, I have it. I have a job. Like I'm getting right, employed, right, right. and yeah. then I have a, a fallback, which is I could go on tour. If they but a lot of people feel like they have to strike while the iron's hot and do everything. Like like projects are thrown at them, and it's like eh, if this dries up, I better let me do this, do that, do that, and just do everything. And yeah, guys, no, you don't have to do that. And also mm. the amount you'd have to to me that you'd I'd have to trade in for that of my mm. right. life. Well, it's that's just it. it. A lot of people will just sacrifice. Yes. Any if you're real an actor, lifetime. if you're an actor, that's mm-hmm. your job. Yeah. If you're an actor, an you actor. better fucking do that. Take everything. <laughs> better take every possible part. Your family better appreciate it and lay right. off. Because you are you have no fucking ability to create anything for yourself. A comedian actor can just you know worst comes to worst, you're back out on the road doing great. Many ways to make doing a living. And yeah, an actor. An actor is just an empty. It's like a cup. <laughs> hold, 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 yes. It's like a cup hoping somebody will pour some coffee in it. <laughs> there's just no. There's no fucking. They just please. Right, right, right. God, Whenever yeah. you see an act like a, a movie and yeah. the actor's playing this really complex, interesting character, you right. know, like this some kind of genius, <laughs> yeah. amazing person, and then you meet them and they're like, "Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool." Right. <laughs> and you realize he has no fucking. Nothing's in, there. They just poured the words into him. And and then he know he had, you know they have this wonderful ability to to, to have it come out and feel right. Yeah. It's an amazing thing that they can do it, but it doesn't. They don't keep any of the coolness or the. the <laughs> it really <laughs> is amazing when you see somebody do such a good job in a movie, and then you sit down to talk to them and in an interview or something, and it's pulling teeth. They have nothing. No, they're There's not that no, person. And perhaps that takes it takes that type of person. It does. You to, have to be, be the empty, empty vessel that can what? be filled I, with a whole new some personality. Look at it that way, What's and I'm the, being uh, mean. There's I, plenty. I, I, I've had friends You're that are actors. being honest. But, they're, but it's like being an athlete. I, I, that's the way I think of them. Mm-hmm. There are a, lot, a lot of actors are like jocks. And it is amazing right. when you get like a fucking Michael Jordan mm-hmm. to work with who just can really... And some of them are both, you know. I, right. This year, we I, Jeremy Renner did like a two-episode arc on the show. Mm. And he's actually a really intelligent, cool guy. He's a very nice guy, too. But he's okay. he's like having... Like fucking, you know, Derek Jeter on the set, and Jesus, yeah. the shit he can do. He's just so good. Really, you know? I think you just realized that you use actors on your show, and you had to, I have to be this. nice to them. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't care. <laughs> I, you I know, that's no. that brilliant explanation. Right, anyway, Wait a minute, I use actors on my show. There's, there's no way I'm going to call Al Pacino and he's going <laughs> to yeah. say, "I heard you on Opie and Anthony." <laughs> right, true. Uh, I need somebody. Could you book me a coffee cup so I can <laughs> fucking yes? Yeah, get me an empty vessel. Yeah, I guess. Give me some. <laughs> Some random empty vessel yeah. from your agency. Yeah. Send them over. That's no, not well. <laughs> when we were uh, that's smart, we were told we had Louis till uh, nine. It's already nine. Louis so busy now. We yeah. got to get him out of here, man. Uh, fucking guys. great seeing I don't know what to you. Say, Good to see you guys. Always. Go get the GQ and check out uh, the yeah, fifteen funniest people. You can alive just flip through it. CK. Uh, just New <laughs> stand and put it back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you'd buy it. <laughs> you don't need to take that home. Uh, oh, you will. What time tonight is it on? <laughs> Ten. Ten o'clock. And two episodes. Two episodes. Ten. Ten so, so from ten to eleven every Monday. Yes. It's my. Uh, there's one epi- one double episode that they're forty five minutes each. Yeah. Oh. So there's one night that I'm on for ninety minutes. Very cool. Ooh. It's like the week before the prim- the finale. Yeah. 
I did this whole flashback episodes, and it turned into like a, a movie, basically. So it's like a, it's two episodes, but they filled out to a ninety minute. Oh, did you ask them like, look, I need huh. more time here, or did you just? Yeah, uh, they used to be hard. It used to be like you fight for a minute <laughs> hey. over, but everything's different now for the all television. Like with how much time they take. Yeah, it doesn't Nobody matter gives anymore, shit anymore for some reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so most care. people don't watch it on the air anyway, uh -huh. so it doesn't matter. So I told them I, these are both the 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 actual running time is like thirty three minutes each. But with commercials, that's 45 right. minutes. And they said, yeah, the Sons of Anarchy turns in like twice the amount. They, everybody goes over now. Okay. So, <laughs> and anyway, uh, anyway. you don't uh, don't tune in late tonight either because that opening oh, sequence. Yeah, the first scene so of the first show funny. is one of the funniest things that we've it's done on great. the show. And the er, the first part on the street with the garbage men was yeah. directed by my assistant director. Because really? I was throwing up and I couldn't get to the set. Wow. I was vomiting. Out of my asshole and my mouth. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> Just water. Uh, and so he and they said, "Look, we'll shoot it because um, everybody was there and ready." Uh -huh. They said, "We'll shoot it with Adam, and uh, and if you if you don't like it, we can reschedule it. But as long as everybody's here, let's shoot it." Uh, so they shot it, and he fucking nailed it. It's great. Fucking great. Yeah, yes, man. I saw you like a week after that, and they said you you were eating ice cream and you were sick and you were just shitting and puking. Yeah, I was in bad shape. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. Glad you're better. Yes. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you're better. I'm glad you're better. Let's get him out of here. Right. Jesus, Louis, Louis thanks, man. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, guys. Relax. The Opie and Anthony Show will be right back.